Hello again, this is Mark Freed, and this is the eighth video in a series of videos that I have created for new users of the NILT platform. And in this video, we're going to continue talking about how you can use HTML commands and CSS commands to uh, format your documents in NILT. Um, so we're going to talk about three things, uh, headers and paragraphs, some additional inline elements and symbols, and lists. So in HTML, headers and paragraphs are uh, considered known as block elements. And as I mentioned in the previous video, headers are coded with a lowercase h and a number from 1 to 6, each of which represents a different size declining from 1 to 6. Now, uh, media wiki headlines, which you can see in their, I mean headlines, uh, headers, in the edit bar here at level two to level five, as you know, you can use those to create sections. Um, but there are some differences, and we, we showed some of them last time. But the main thing you need to remember here is you don't want to use H1. H1 is fine if you're creating a web page and just writing HTML for that web page. But uh, media, at least in the NILT, uh, app, media wiki application h1 is reserved to create new pages or actually uh, yes h1 which would be equal sign one equal sign in media wiki terms and so you don't want to do that just don't use h1 because it could create problems like i've written it here don't do this equal sign one equal you wouldn't do that and you shouldn't use h1 so h2 to h6 are fine depends how big you want the header um, paragraph the command is P. So if we look here, what you're going to see is uh, we'll get the list later. But that is how you create a list. Uh, so I have a, a H4 size HTML headers and paragraphs. Very simple paragraph HTML. And here's the text that I'm talking about. You have probably noticed many times this HTML like command, no wiki and I have H4, and what that means is anything in between no wiki and forward slash no wiki should not be interpreted as a media wiki command, but should be printed just as it's typed here. So that is how I've been able to show you all these different commands in all these videos. And uh, if you go through the editing, you'll see it a lot. Um, so in the paragraphs, uh, One of the things that uh, I'm going to do right here is I'm going to, I, I, you might have noticed that I created this header and it doesn't look like these. These are all in serif type and the text is in sans serif type. So I happen to think the page looks better if they're all the same. So I said, let's make this sans serif. Well, I couldn't do that in MediaWiki, but I can do it in HTML. And here's how I did it. So I put in the less than sign H4, but instead of the greater than sign, put a space in, I type style. This is embedding a CSS command. This is a, this is a CSS command, and it is embedded in the HTML command. So style equals quote, and here I use font family. You have a bunch of choices in CSS. Uh, so and one of the arguments you can use with the style command is font family. You can use many others. But I don't know exactly which typeface this is. I just know it's sans serif. So I'm assuming that by typing sans serif as font family, it's going to select whatever the default sans serif typeface is in this document. And indeed, that's what it did. And then I said, OK, here's the title. Close it up. And now I can look at it. And what I get is the title in sans serif type to match the rest of the text. Next thing you can see I did is I made that orange. How did I do that? Same thing. Open, start the paragraph. And again, I do have the greater than sign, but I have the CSS embedded in the opening, the beginning of the HTML command. So style equals, in this case, I chose color. and 
I said, I have orange red, that's an HTML color. Um, to learn more about the HTML options, you need to go to the uh, W3C pages, um, which are uh, great help pages for HTML. And you can find out everything uh, you want to know about uh, the options you can use. So that's supposed to say, now, I can fix that. Suppose that you want your text to appear in a color other than black. Yeah, well, I did that. And embedding a CSS color command in the beginning of a paragraph allows you to do that. So that's what I've done there. Now, suppose you want to do more than one thing. Well, you can. You can just keep stringing them along. So in this case, I want the font family. I, I changed the color of the uh, header to blue, and I also wanted it to be in the sans serif typeface. So style equals quote. And everything stays in the quote, and you just have um, the item that you're going to affect, and then how you're going to affect it. That's a, followed by a colon. That's followed by a semicolon. I don't have a semicolon after blue. I could put one in. It won't change anything um, because I don't need it because there's nothing going on after blue. I have the quote and show. I don't need it here. It just didn't change anything. So. Um, that's how you would use the CSS, and I know it's a very short introduction, but uh, uh, it's enough to get you started. And again, we talked about inline elements. A couple other inline elements you might want to know. Q creates quotes. So you can type quotes. You don't really need to use it in MediaWiki because it understands just the quotation symbol. But if you had a reason to put it in, um, you could use the, the Q. Uh, a more useful one is to create a line break. Um, now in HTML, it's just less than br greater than. Because you don't have an argument, you don't need anything after. There is no, uh, this is not required. Here's the uh, ending command. However, MediaWiki does recognize that. So you can type it either way. And in fact, that's what I did to break this line here. So if you want to see that, that's right here. And uh, yeah, right. So here's the no wiki, so you could see what the symbol looks like. And here's the actual break in media wiki terms. Again, you don't need that forward slash, uh, but you can use either one. And that's what broke the line there. So now let's talk about lists. Um, just to Give, show you some lists. So you see there's two kinds of lists. This one is numbered and this one has, is bulleted. In HTML, this is considered an ordered list and this is considered an unordered list. Now unordered doesn't mean that, ordered doesn't mean it got sorted. It's This is in the order I put it in. It doesn't sort itself out. And similarly, this does not randomize itself or move around. It's just, if you want it numbered, it's called an ordered list. And the command, not surprisingly, is OL. So to create up here, you see I have an unordered list where I've just put the subjects that I was going to cut that I'm covering in this section in this talk. And down here, so here's an ordered list. So you put the uh, beginning command OL. So basically, all of these things are embedded are in, inside the OL, the ordered list command. The LI is for list. You'll see it's in both places. So you put OL or UL, depending upon if you want it numbered or bulleted. Uh, and yes, you could use CSS to change the style of the bullet. You'd put it, you'd just put it in here and do style equals, and you'd have to know the bullet commands, which I don't know off the top of my head. So here what I've done is, um, and I've talked a little bit about the ampersand. Because these symbols start with an ampersand. I can't just put an ampersand here and make it appear the way I want it to appear, which is like this. I want to show you, I want to show you here how to actually write it. I wanted this, this is the command, ampersand copy semicolon to create uh, the copyright symbol. If I had just typed uh, this ampersand, like this, I would have gotten the symbol twice. That was not what I wanted. So because the ampersand itself is part of the command, 
uh, ampersand is also a symbol. So you have to use the command for the ampersand symbol, uh, which is ampersand AMP semicolon, and then the word copy and semicolon, and now it appears correctly. RARR stands for right arrow, um, so ampersand right arrow semicolon is another symbol, and then here's the actual symbol. So these are the symbols, and then I gave you some math symbols down here, same thing, um, and the only difference is they're in an unordered list. If you want to learn about more symbols, the MediaWiki help page, formatting help page, has many of them at the bottom. Here it is. And if you just hold your cursor over it, so here's British pound, hold the cursor over it and tells you it's ampersand pound semicolon. So that's a good place to start. Of course, there are many more symbols you can get from the HTML help pages, but that is how you will use CSS and uh, some inline elements and symbols uh, to, and, and how you'll create lists in your NILT documents. And it gives you a lot more flexibility than you have with the basic media wiki commands that are available on the edit toolbar.